Have you ever asked what's going to happen with all the students that are coming into the district? Why doesn't somebody do something about some of the problems with our schools? Well, that's really what this is about tonight. This is a plan to address all of that. Picture, if you will, for a moment that education is really a three-legged stool. You've got two strong legs here in the district. You've invested well in teachers and administrators, in technology, but the third leg, the facilities that support your everyday life, well, the termites are starting to eat away at that leg. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, especially with the additional students you try to put on that stool and what's happening to that. I'm going to use two media tonight. On your right will be pretty much good old-fashioned hand sketches of what we're proposing for renovations and additions to spaces. And on the left is what's considered state-of-the-art and presentation media. In fact, this on the left is what your children are learning how to do in school today. Much of what I've learned for computer skills I actually get from my uh, daughter who's in the eighth grade. With that, let the show begin. This is about a plan for the entire district. The key word here being comprehensive. It is all inclusive of everything that your facilities need to bring you through the year 2009 and 10. The real driving force of why this plan was put together is the exploding population growth. It's not just burgeoning. We use some lesser words in the beginning. It's really exploding. There are also many deferred issues with your buildings and sites. We're going to explore those in just a minute. It's about improving the quality of the environment for learning. You've all heard about air quality and other issues. We're going to explore that. Let's look first at population growth. Since your district was organized 30 years ago in 68, this plots the trends. Here we are today, just under 3,800 students. Now the real growth spurt started back in the late 80s, and it's on a, a trail of roughly 3% growth per year, even escalating more as you get further towards the end of the plan. Now this, these numbers have been put together from many places. There are formulas with names like cohort survival method that are applied. There are building permits that have been issued in the towns, subdivisions that are on, up for planning board approval or already on the boards and ready to go. All of that's been put into the equation. What that translates into, for instance, here in Atkinson, you have about 390 students now. In five years, you have closer to 430, and by the end of 10 years, you'll have almost 500 students right here in Atkinson. So the need throughout the district, in the next five years, there'll be almost 900 more students, and that equates to about 42 classrooms. Now that's roughly the size of your present high school. You need to add that many more classrooms throughout the district. By the year 2009 and 10, almost 1,800 students equating to 83 classrooms. You've already seen some of the space crunch here. In your media center, you've already started to carve up that space for small group learning. This is a building that was designed nearly 200 years ago, literally in the horse and buggy days, long before they ever conceived of the traffic that you have now, cars and buses. Even some of your newer buildings have just been band-aided over the years and need major work. This is down at the high school. You'll see throughout the district things like this, and we'll explain what that has to do with the quality of education. Briefly, the process that went into putting together this plan. Just understanding everything you've got, you have about 145 developed acres here in the district over 400,000 square feet of buildings. That's worth about $50 million, your current investment in facilities. We worked hard with the facilities staff, administrators, and teachers, people that live here day in and day out. They know what issues there are here in these buildings to work with. 
We came in with a team of as many as 21 architects and engineers to explore every nook and cranny of your buildings and sites. We've been in some places that no human being has been in decades. We've had several work sessions with facilities committees, school boards, budget committees, and finally to develop the concepts and the budgets that we bring forward to you. Let's start at the high school. We're going to work our way geographically around the district. Now, if any of you have tried to pick up students here in the afternoon, you'll know what the congestion is here. This is, in fact, one of the worst situations we've seen in the state. There are a double tier of buses here, plus a row of parked cars, plus people trying to find a place to park, and the students are weaving their way through of all of this. So we are proposing, for instance, here at the high school, a new bus loop to segregate the cars and buses and bring them all the way around the back of the facility. We're also proposing additional parking here and in front of the middle school. Sight lighting, if you've ever gone to an event here in the evening, you know what it's like to find your way around at night. Irrigation, so we can actually get the grass to grow. Some landscaping, to deinstitutionalize the buildings a little bit, if you will. New septic systems to handle the additional expansion. Regrade and reseed some of the ball fields and add grandstands out at your home field. Inside the building at the high school, this is really where one of your greatest needs is right now. There'll be an additional 12 classrooms, four new science labs, art classrooms, health classroom, and we're even bringing the preschool up from Pollard. Some of the, uh, the modern teaching techniques actually integrate the two, integrate preschool and high school, and they benefit from each other. And we're also proposing to expand the cafeteria library and the lecture hall. Now inside the building, air quality, we're going to talk about this in each of your buildings. One way we can measure air quality is to measure carbon dioxide in the air. We all generate carbon dioxide. Outdoor air has roughly 500 parts per million, four to 500 parts per million, that's a baseline. What's considered reasonable for indoor air is about twice that, 800 to 1,000 parts per million. You can see here at the high school that there are several areas that exceed that significantly. That's when you start to worry that the students aren't really getting enough fresh air to breathe. And there are lots of things that go along with that. Carbon dioxide by itself, higher concentrations tend to make you sleepy, tend to make you lethargic. It also can cause headaches. Bottom line is it's causing the students not to be paying attention to learning so that you know, all of your investment in teachers and books and computers isn't being fully realized. Now there are some other factors in indoor air quality. There are some long names like volatile organic compounds, VOCs. Those are things that are generated in the space, art supplies, photocopiers, even the carpets generate chemicals. They also contribute to the equation of headaches, vision problems, dry throats, microbial growth. That now starts to enter into another level of issues and we're going to see that with some of your other buildings. When you bring moisture into the buildings, it becomes in, es in essence a petri dish for microbial growth. And dust, even just plain old dust. These are some of the things you find in, in the carpets for instance. This is of course magnified, but these are dust mites that are living in the carpets in your schools and they, all by themselves, have allergens um, that contribute to students' health. Some of the things that we're doing at the high school. Other things we found, for instance, are on the roof where the air comes into the building, there is essentially constantly a pond of water. That tends to be a primordial soup that generates bacteria. So already the air that's coming in is not really fresh. It's already got bacteria in the airstream. There are several areas where moisture leaks into the building. The flooring, of course, in many areas is asbestos or carpet that's way past its lifetime. Same with ceiling tiles. Really, the whole building needs a ventilation system here at the high school. And asbestos abatement, you'll find, is a common denominator in all of your buildings. 
Other improvements at the high school. This was built back when energy wasn't a concern. Essentially, the walls are single thickness plastic. So there are, we are proposing new modern materials for that. The doors, if you ever try to open the doors to go to an event, you know what a struggle that is. The gym floor, it's really seen its last sanding. It cannot be refinished anymore, and that gets used constantly for all kinds of events. Same with the bleachers, lockers, plumbing fixtures are just past their life. Um, you'll find a common denominator in most of your buildings is electrical receptacles. They cannot handle modern technology. We are also proposing to com bring computer cabling into the entire district to bring you in to the 21st century. And fire sprinkle systems, you'll find that throughout as well. You've invested recently in the middle school for a fire sprinkler system, and we are proposing to extend that to the rest of your buildings. And yes, even an aesthetic upgrade. You'd be surprised what changing the interior, just changing the color scheme will do for the attitude of the students and the teachers in the building. Okay, going over to the middle school. Now here you've made a recent investment. So the, we're only really talking about some minor juggling to create some computer rooms where the music area is now. But soon you will need even more classrooms here, another 10 classrooms by the year 2003 and 4. Now air quality at the middle school, actually you're in relatively good shape here. You have a good ventilation system there. The part that's actually spiked here, we're able to, to solve that problem on the spot, if you will. Essentially, access panels had come loose from the ductwork over years, and it come down, and the, the air was not getting to where it was supposed to go. So the ventilation systems were working, but the end product wasn't getting to the classrooms. There are some other issues here with roof drainage, same with moisture getting in the building. You'll start to recognize these common denominators now. Other building improvements at the middle school. This is a classic example of where facilities problems and space problems clash. This is the main electrical room. There's not supposed to be anything in here, but there is no place for stuff, so it's used for storage. Same problem here with lockers. The heating system needs work. Plumbing fixtures again, and same components. Now, there's another piece of this equation that really makes the middle high school campus work. Essentially, we're creating a new space to connect the two to share core facilities, particularly to share some of the drama curriculum with a stage and a backstage area, music and dance studios, choral band and ensemble rooms, orchestra space, practice areas, and finally, a real studio for the district. You have a great distance learning program, but you don't really have a good hub for it. So the new studio would be adjacent to your existing lecture hall and actually take advantage of that space to work in conjunction with it. By the way, the auditorium that comes as part of this would seat 1,200 people. So that would serve as quite an event for the whole district. Time to add up some numbers. The investment at the high school it's about 7.31 million. Investment at the middle school, about 1.36 million. And there was an amendment on the floor of the deliberative session that brought the entire project up to 31 plus million. It is to build all the classrooms that you need through the year 2009 and 10. So that added 1.175 to this part of the project. The auditorium and core classrooms, about 4.42 million. And the athletic fields, we talked about grandstands and regrading and seating and such, 470,000. And with the amendments, you also get some additional parking for your sporting events behind the SAU and lighted tennis courts and probably a practice field behind the SAU as well. We've talked about roughly about half of the plan so far. All of the gray area is the middle high school campus. High school at 26% of the total investment, middle school five, the core classrooms and auditorium 15, and the athletic fields 2%. That adds up to just under half of the whole plan. We're now gonna work our way out 
to the elementary schools, starting in Plastow at Forward, of course here to Atkinson, Danville, and Sandown. Pollard has some of the same problems that all of your other buildings have with sight. There are too many cars and buses trying to be in the same place at the same time. We are proposing to improve the traffic flow here with new parent drop-off, new parking, by removing the modulars, or the temporary classrooms, if you will. There are some drainage issues here where water gets into the building through the foundation, and the playground needs work. Inside the building at Pollard, now you've recently made an investment here as well, but again, with the burgeoning population, you'll need to do a bit more. There are still some renovations that have to be done to get some of the curriculum up out of the basement. And by the year 2003 and four, you will need more classrooms and expand the kitchen to handle the additional children. Air quality at Pollard, the same as some of your older schools. The newer parts are in relatively good shape, but the older parts, where there, in some places there are no ventilation systems at all, they need a significant investment. Now part of the health issues will be diminished by removing the temporary classrooms. The classrooms that were built 20 some odd years ago will finally be removed as part of this plan. You'll start to see common denominators here. There's a new one here, it's what co what's called combustion air. In essence, your oil burners aren't getting enough air to work properly. That has some effects with energy efficiency, but even more importantly, some of those fumes can get re-entrained into the space under certain wind conditions. Inside the building, again, other improvements, the foundation, windows, roofs, really all essential items. That just have been put off over the years. And finally, computer caving to bring it into the 21st century. Investment here at Pollard, 1.375 million, and with the amendment to the bond to bring you up to 2009 and 10, $750,000. Here we are at Atkinson, finally. Let's see what's happening here. We already talked about the fact of cars, buses, and kids all trying to be in the same place at the same time. So we are proposing to improve the traffic flow. Now you're fortunate here that you recently picked up a piece of land from the town where the old garage was down here. That will allow for a whole separate drop-off area for the bus loop. And the cars can now have this area all to themselves. There will be, of course, additional parking and that can be shared with Town Hall. A new septic system that will replace some of the very old ones and handle the expansion that can actually be built underneath the new parking lot with a gravity flow. Quite a few drainage issues coming off the hill, site lighting, and a playground upgrade. Space improvements. The initial plan was just to add a few classrooms here and do some more art space and add a gym, very similar to the space that you're in now, so that you have, like Pollard, a multi-purpose room cafeteria and a gymnasium space. We're also going to ex move the media center from where it is now, down closer to the front of the building and expand it significantly. New administration area, so there'll really be a whole new entry to the building where this becomes now the public and community side of the building, if you will and four more classrooms by the amendment to the bond will go on now. Air quality here, similar to Pollard, you have newer parts of the building that are in relatively good shape, but some of the older parts are not. There's another interesting phenomena here, that I don't know if you can quite see it, but some, many of the ceiling tile are actually cupped, and that's an indicator that they've gotten repeatedly moist and dried over time. So it's an indicator that there is moisture getting into the building that shouldn't be there. We are proposing significant work on the exterior walls to correct that. New windows, these things you'll recognize by now. Same problem here with combustion air and asbestos abatement. This 
probably is a classic example of what's happening to address computers throughout the district. Wiring any way you can, cabling any way you can, but all of that will be addressed as part of this plan. It'll be done right. Work to the building shell, windows, doors. The investment here at Atkinson, $3.2 million, 3.22. And with the amendment to the bond, you will get a full sprinkler system, similar to the high school and the middle school, and the, all of the classrooms that you need to bring you through the year 2009 and 10 will be built now. Out in Danville, their problem really is how you get into the site. If any of you have been out to event out there, you know how tight this turn is on the Route 111A. The sight distance is almost non-existent, and the traffic comes fast here, turning out onto that road. So we're proposing a new access road there. Same traffic flow and parking problems. You recognize all these by now. Yep. Danville is one of the towns that's growing fastest. Their population will double in the next 10 years as far as students goes. Same problems with air quality here, but theirs is caused by another interesting phenomena. The exterior walls of the building are essentially sponges. They are single width block. You can see what's happened over New England winters where water gets into the block and freezes and cracks, and that whole moisture trail gets further into the building. It gets into the carpets, it grows microbial growth, it gets into the air, it gets into the student's lungs, and we talked about that whole sequence of events. Uh, an interesting byproduct, if you will, of upgrading the exterior walls, and the same will happen here in Atkinson on some of the, the block parts of the building, they'll actually be sided and trimmed to be more like a New England vernacular building, so they'll be they won't have the commercial institutional look that they have now. There'll be more of a residential effect. Seems like every time we've been out to Danville, there's a service truck there. There are other things that they need. The investment here at Danville, 3.2 million, very similar to here at Atkinson and add the additional classrooms to 2009 and 10, 660,000. Sandown, Sandown has yet another problem and that they cannot expand their building anymore. They're maxed out by septic capacity. There is no more room on the site for any more septic systems. Same problems with traffic flow and parent drop off. So we are proposing in Sandown to actually split this school off into two. There'll be a new site. Okay. The existing building will revert to a grade four through five. Because the student population will actually diminish there with the removal of the modulars, all they really need is some media center, administration, and storage work. Now Sandown 2, which is derived from a proposal that you had several years ago, will actually be to create a one through three facility. And that will be up in the northwest part of town. Air quality in the existing building, similar to the others, some problem areas. And this depicts sort of the remnants of roof leaks that have recently been repaired, but there's still the after effects to be addressed. Same issues. Still some rotting outside that has to be addressed, even though there's a new roof on top. This building actually needs new boilers. They're about to go, and a new chimney. So the investment to sand down one, the four, what will become a four or five, 1.4 million, and a full sprinkler system, another $80,000. The new building, sand down two, about 4.9 million, and with a sprinkler system, another $90,000. So, time to add all of this up. New classrooms, 
the base bond plus the amendment will get you the 83 classrooms we talked about earlier. Now just as a back check on that, that will, uh, that will leave you with roughly a 21 to 1 student teacher ratio at, at that time. Budget summary, add it all up. We talked about close to half of it is spent at the middle high school campus. All total, 31325000 Another way to look at it, close to half of the plan is to address space problems, whether it be additions or major renovations. A little more than a quarter is for building improvements, all the health issues we showed you. Close to 10% is for site improvements, all the traffic issues we showed you in the athletic fields. 2% for asbestos abatement, 11% for furnishings and equipment of the new space, fees and miscellaneous expenses, and it's prudent to have at least the 5% contingency in a plan of this magnitude. What does that mean to you individually? Here in Atkinson, the average impact on taxes, the average investment you'll make is about $1.17 per year. The lowest year of the bond will be 44 cents, and the highest year will be $2.07. What that means, if you have a property that's assessed at $100,000, it's about $117 a year. $150,000 property, about $176, and $200,000 property, about $234. That's based on a 20-year bond at 4.7% interest, which is pretty incredible. That's the lowest we've seen it since I can remember. Just to put this in perspective with other districts in the state, we're fortunate to work with several other districts. The average plan, if you will, has an impact of two to three dollars per thousand. There are some that are building, their building programs are costing them four to five dollars per thousand. So even though this seems like quite a bit, relative to what some other districts are doing, it's not as great. I'll ask uh, Dr. McDonald to explain it a bit differently. What we wanted to do was, was take a look at, at the principle of, of the project. We're asking the voters to approve $31,325,000. First thing we have to do is, is what is it really going to cost the, the taxpayers? Well, we're going to get $15,262,500 in state aid. Along with that, we're going to make $800,000 on interest on the proceeds. We'll invest the money that we get from the bond before we spend it. We'll make at least $800,000 on it. We can reduce the cost of taxpayers using that interest money. So that leaves $15,262,500 for the taxpayers to pay plus the, the interest on the bond. Of that, $9,400,000 is renovations, renovations that we're going to have to do anyway. Whether we get the bond or not, we're going to have to put money in the budget for renovations. And we could be looking at, at one to two million dollars a year for the next five to ten years just to do renovations. And when we were done with that, we still wouldn't have any of the space problems addressed. So if we take out the renovations from, from the 15 million that we have to come up with, slightly less than six thousand dollars six million dollars is buying the classroom space and the upgrade of the core facility. So it's a different way of looking at it. State aid, a little over $15 million. Investments, $800,000. Renovations, it's going to cost us $9,400,000 no matter what we do. In fact, it'll cost us more if we do it piecemeal. And everything else really is costing us less than $6 million, plus the, the interest on the bond. So just a slightly different way of looking at it and putting it in perspective. <coughs> With a plan like this, you always have to ask, is it the right time to do it? Well, some of the factors to consider is, as we discussed, it is the lowest interest rate that we've ever seen. The fact that you are eligible for 50% state aid is significant, but that's only really available with a comprehensive plan. As Dr. McDonald indicated, you can't get it just for renovations. You have to have a whole plan to improve the entire structure of your district. Just to put that in perspective, Maine and Vermont have recently gone through some refunding. 
Now, essentially, you have to get in line to get state aid in Maine and Vermont. Several districts have gone to the point where they can't wait for the state aid and they footed the bill entirely themselves. It also jives well with the retirement of some of your current bonds that will actually diminish some of those tax impacts as you get further on into the plan. Another way to look at it, over the 20 year life of the bond at your current annual operating budget, which is about $26 million a year, with just 3% inflation, you will have spent over $720 million on education over the next 20 years. This plan at roughly 31 million is about 4% of that. Now interestingly enough, with the state aid, it essentially offsets all of your interest payments. So the real expenditure is only about 31 million for the whole plan. When this will be done, it'll be done in two waves, beginning as soon as you authorize the vote, construction starting in the fall. The second wave out here in Atkinson will get all of the new facilities online by the turn of the millennium, December 1999. There's always the do nothing alternative. What if this does not pass? There is serious consideration of double sessions starting at the high school. Essentially uh, having two school days within one, a morning and an afternoon school day. Overtaxing of the core facilities, that when that happens, you tend to reduce art, music, and phys ed classes. The media center suffers. You can always go to yet larger classes, put more students in a class, more modulars. Those are prevalent throughout the district. There are some sites, as we mentioned, that can't take more modulars, Sandown being one. There's even been discussion of year-round schooling. Not very popular, but it is a way to spread the additional population out. And of course you can continue with the escalating environmental health concerns that we talked about, deterioration of the buildings and the site and traffic safety issues. Is it a wise investment? You always have to ask yourself that. Is it really a good investment? We talked about a comprehensive plan. It does address the urgent space needs qualifies for that state aid, that 50% that you won't get if you did this individually. If you spend $2 million a year, <clears throat> for instance, over the next five years just renovating, you won't get any state aid for that. It protects what you've got for quality of education here in, in Timberlane, and ideally it enhances that quality. <clears throat> Good schools, most realtors will tell you, the good schools do equate to increased property values. When people come to look from out of town to buy, whether or not they have children, they'll look at your school facilities as a way to gauge the attitude, if you will, of the community. Good schools also equate to a stable economy. It's hard to imagine that the elementary school kids here, as early as 10 years from now, will start to become the leaders in your community. And finally, good old-fashioned civic pride. Schools such as this in Atkinson are still the heart and soul of your communities. How to implement the plan? You have to vote. You got to bring others. You got to call others and remind them to vote. And if you really want to know more about it, there are copies of the plan. They are this thick, and there's a Reader's Digest version this thick. They're available everywhere, town halls, libraries, schools. There will be videos running shortly on local access table, cable TV. Or the whole thing, if you really want to see it, is on our website at www.hlturner.com. With that, I wish you successful passage. Thank you.